Hello everyone. Welcome to the next class on the probability and statistics. Today we will discuss about the what is the weak law of the large number and how you can prove that whether the sequence holds for the weak law of the large number or not. Myself, Dr. Garg, working in the School of Mathematics, Tapar Institute, India. You can contact me through either of my email IDs if you feel any doubt related to probability and stat. Else, you can simply follow this link and find the playlist probability and statistics. So in order to start with the weak law of the large number, we will firstly define the convergence in the probability. All of you know that if any of the sequence, it will converges to the alpha, then we can define like this way. Xn converges is less than epsilon for all n is greater than or equal to m. Now this is the sequence in terms of the real analysis. But if you are defining the probability, then I have to take as the p here. Look at that. This is the probability of the Xn minus alpha. Is less than of any of a positive epsilon is one because the maximum value is one. Else you can define like this way. If it is a greater than, then I can write as a zero. So once these two either of the condition is hold, then we can write as x n converges to the alpha. This p represent for the in probability. So as n approaches infinity. Another thing is that when suppose x one, x two, and x n is a sequence of the random variable, and mu n and sigma n is the mean and variances of the sigma x n. Means if x I call as x one is the mu one is the mean of the x one, variance of the x one is my sigma one square. Similarly, mean of the x two is my mu two, and the variances of the x two is my sigma two, and so on. So once you are here, then you can prove that x n converges to the mu of n in probability as n approaches infinity. The proof is quite simple. That there is a Chebyshev inequality there. If you write this Chebyshev inequality, it will be nothing but less than of the one by k square. Where what is the k sigma is nothing but what is the k sigma n is this. So what is the value of the k is epsilon by sigma n. Why sigma n? Because this is the mu of n. So if you substitute the value of k in here, you will get this value. And clearly, it goes to the zero because sigma n approaches to the zero. So therefore, the weak law. Therefore, x n minus mu of n converges to zero in terms of probability. Now, based on this convergence in probability and this Chebyshev theorem, we can state the weak law of the large number. What the statement of the weak law of the large number is? If x n x i is are the sequence of the random variable such that mu i s are their respective means and The b n is the variance of their sum of their random variable, and it must be a finite p. This less than infinity. That's a finite. Then probability of their average of the sequence is converges probability to their average of their mean, provided provided this b n upon n square is approaches zero. You can again prove that since uh, you can write this as nothing but one upon one by k square. In terms of Chebyshev inequality, where what is the k sigma? K sigma is nothing but my epsilon, and k is sigma by n. So if you substitute the value here, this will be nothing but my sigma square divided by n. Can sigma square is nothing but my b of n is there? So this will goes to the zero when provided this one becomes the zero. Now in this case, you have to see that there are the three main condition. One is the respective means. Second is this finite condition, and third one is here. So these are the uh, existence of the weak law of last number. Then the, all these three three condition must hold. Make sure that the first condition is only with the necessary. So if first condition does not exist, then the weak law of the last number cannot be hold. While the third one is only the sufficient condition. Now once we have these three conditions are there, then how you check whether the weak law of the last number hold or not? But firstly we will. Think check about the IID. What is the meaning of the IID? Is I for the independent, identical, and distributed. The meaning of the IID e, e, IID means uh, if you have the x1, the mean of the x1 is say mu, then the mean of the x2 is also the mu. That is, the mean and the variances are same for each of the random variable. Then this, if such condition holds, then this is called as the IID. Now you can check whether the weak law of the large number hold for the IID or not. So again, you have to check the three conditions. Firstly, this exists or not. So look at that. This is already exists. That's a finite. Secondly, you have to check whether the BN is a finite number or not. Now since this is the independent, so you can write this. Since this is the independent, so you can write as a sum of them. 
what is the variance of the x1 is sigma square this is also sigma square and so on so what is the sum is here and which is a less than zero that is the exist third condition is that you have to prove that bn upon n square goes to the zero so what is the bn upon n square is it will be cancelled out so sigma square by n and so goes to zero so therefore since all these three conditions are satisfied so we can say the weak of the last number holds always for the iid and once it is hold then you can say that according to the chebyshev theorem xn converges to the probability of mu xn converges in probability to the mu now how you check that whether the weak class of the last number holds in journal or not so i will discuss that firstly you have to check that whether the sequence are independent or the sequence is identically and independent distributed once it is independent only if it is only independent then you have to check all these three conditions if it is iid independent and identical both then you have to check only that uh, the mean is existence or not once the mean is existent that's enough for checking the weak law of the large number and this condition is called as the uh, kinchen theorem on the other hand if at least one of these condition does not hold then we will apply the further test and that one of the test is called as the markov theorem what is the markov theorem suggest that the weak law of the large number holds if we will calculate the expected value of this variable and if exist and bounded then the weak law of the large number holds make sure that the this markov theorem provides only the necessary conditions that is if you have to prove that this is unbounded then definitely the weak law of the large number cannot be hold another uh, necessary and the sufficient condition for the weak law of the large number is if all of your random variables like sequence xn is uniformly bounded then this condition is necessary as well as this sufficient apart from them if the another necessary and sufficient condition for this holds that here where y is nothing but sn minus the mean of this divided by n where sn is nothing but the sum of there so we will see how we can prove them with the help of the numerical examples so if you look at this statement firstly you have to check whether the variables are independent or independent and identically so look at that the sequence are only independent so once it is independent then you have to check all these three conditions what is given to you how many variables are there x i and i varies from 1 to n so it is given to be here so firstly you have to define this table the this is the xk it is plus minus of k 2k and another is 0k so i have to define their corresponding probability now since it is only independent so you have to check these three conditions firstly that is a mean is existence you have to prove that this is existence second you have to prove that this is a finite number and third you have to prove that this approach is toward the zero so let's start with this one so how you define the mean of this x into probability of k now there are the three of the x with respect to the k so you have to define like this way this into this this into this and this into this so once you will calculate you will see this answer with a zero and it's a finite number so the first condition holds now since they are the independent so you have to define the sum of their variances is nothing but the uh, variances here like this way so in order to find the variance of x1 variance of x2 you can take a case 1 then you can calculate them otherwise you can find in general here how you define the e of x square is that is 2 raised to power 2k into probability and so on so you can say this is x square into probability plus x square of probability plus zero square of this minus what is the mean of them is zero so after the calculation you will get here so therefore you can write this what is the value of the x1 so you can substitute case 1 this is 1 this is 1 and so on so what is the answer of this is nothing but my n so this is also be a finite number this is a finite existence here second property also satisfied now what is the bn upon n square if you bn you have calculated n so is it goes to the zero yes as n approaches infinity so since all these three conditions are satisfied hence the weak law of the large number holds for this sequence second example we will discuss that look at firstly you have to check whether the variables are independent or iid now look at that now in this case the variables are identical and the independent so it means there is enough to satisfy this condition so we can start from here this is the mean 
because here so i can if you draw the table then you may draw like but in this case there is only the one here this is the table corresponding to them so how you find the mean of this this is x this is look at that table this into this so if you substitute here this is a summation with respect to the k so 6 by pi square is the constant it is outside 1 k will be cancelled out so it will be here so once now you can open this bracket you will get here so do you remember what is the sequence uh, now it is a finite or infinite depending upon this infinite series do you remember that what is the series name is this yes this is nothing but the logarithm series now since now it is independent of the i so it, this is a finite so therefore by the Kinchian theorem we class the large number holds for this given sequence look at one more example whether check whether uh, firstly we have to check whether this is identical or the independent only so look at that this is only independent so it means you have to check the all these three condition one by one so what is given to you xi assumes the value i and minus i with equal probabilities so you have to firstly draw the table i and minus i since there are only two values they have equal probability that's a half and half now your task is to find firstly you have to calculate the mean then you have to calculate the bn and then you have to calculate the bn upon n square so firstly we will calculate the mean what is the mean of this is i into 1 by 2 plus minus i of 1 by 2 so what is the answer is 0 how you calculate the e of x square is nothing but i square of 1 by 2 this is not the iota this is i only plus minus of i square into 1 by 2 what is the mean of them is 0 square so what is the answer is i square now since this is a finite number so the first condition is satisfied now you can define the value of the b n now it is given that these are independent therefore you can open them in terms of the here because it is independent so you can open them so once you are opening this equation what is the value of the variance of the x1 so variance of the x i is i square so variance of the x1 is 1 square variance of the x2 is 2 square and so on so do you know what is the sum of the series is this so now since this is also a less than because n is a finite number so this is a second condition also satisfied so what is the bn upon n square this goes to the infinity because look at that degree of the numerator is 2 and here so therefore one of the condition can't be satisfied so we can't draw any conclusion whether the weak law of the large number holds or not once you are say this one of the condition that is not satisfied then we are applying the further test called as the Markov theorem what is the Markov theorem suggests that you have to calculate this value so look at that in this case what is the xi this is i raised to power 1 plus delta and so on so this is the mean what is that this i can written as like this way of probability so once i substitute the value here so what is the answer of this is you can since this is the uh, this is the modulus value of minus i so after solving the, you will get here so this is can so therefore what is the what is the answer of the e of x1 1 plus delta so it will be 1 raised to power 1 plus it is 1 but for the 2 if you calculate the x2 this will be here 3 for here so can you say this is unbounded for all the values of the delta greater than 0 yes because it for the i is 1 this is here i is 2 here i is 3 for this so it is always be the unbounded so therefore once it is unbounded so the by the markov theorem the weak law of the large number does not hold so remember that if this is uh, uh, bounded then again you can't say that whether the weak law of the large number holds or not because this is only the necessary condition so this is the way you can check whether the weak law of the large number holds or not in case of the three different examples in the next class, we will see some more examples on the weak law of the large number for more clarity. Till then, you can simply follow this link and share the videos to the other if you find this is useful. Till then, best of luck students. Happy learning.